recording this meeting to the cloud. Okay. Um, you, you ready for me to call the meeting to order? Yes. Aaron? Yes. Oh, you ready for me to call the meeting to order? Yes, we're ready. You're ready. Okay. I'll read the statement. Uh, during the meeting, we ask that you mute your microphone and turn off your video unless you are a member of the development authority or its staff. If you wish to speak on an item or would like to comment, please either raise your hand or use the chat feature to ask your host a question. The host will ensure the authority recognizes you. Once you are recognized, the host will unmute you and request you to start your video if you have it available. The host may remove any participant that uses lewd behavior or language or disrupts the meeting. Okay, the next item is proof of publication is available for this special meeting. Um, has everybody had the opportunity to review the minutes from the August 17th, 2020 meeting? Yes. 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 Okay, um, would somebody like to make a motion? I move to accept the minutes as presented. Second. Was, um, motion by John, second by Ed. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Next item, uh, to action item, re review architectural proposals. Um, uh, I see that there's been five proposals submitted and um, uh, the, the, there's a wide range of, of pricing on it and um, open it up for discussion. First question, this is a, a professional services proposal, so we're not bound by cheap uh, price or anything like that. Uh, is there any restrictions to our discussions in a public meeting? Is there anything that would be considered uh, executive session. Is that directed at me, John? Uh, it, it is now. All right. Yep. <laughs> no, sorry. You're quite correct. It is professional services. So, I mean, you do not need to take the lowest bidder. Um, and I don't know that there's anything um, that you're going to be discussing that's proprietary. Um, having these proposals in a public meeting will make them public records for purposes of right to know. But I think the bidders understood that when they dealt with, you know, the development authority. So I don't see any basis for an executive session unless, you know, the board sees someone. So the bidders would have possibly signed a non-disclosure for the special tenant. Yes, they did. Okay. I don't know if Aaron, were you intending to lead the discussion? I have some comments on several issues here. Sure, I don't know if you want to go down the, the list of the proposals or if you just wanna ask questions or I'm open for either format. <coughs> well, I, I reviewed them and, and formed some opinions, but I didn't know how we were going to have group discussion. Um, if you wanna go down the, in the order that you listed them in the Excel spreadsheet, or how are we going to proceed? Yeah, we can do that. Sure. Mr. Chairman, do you have a preference? Yeah, well, let's go down the uh, the list as, as they're as they're um, in the spreadsheet. So the first one was Murray Associates. We came in at ninety nine thousand eight hundred. Um, have some comments there. Their proposal included construction drawings and specs, code review, pre bid questions, uh, construction administration, 10 job conferences, uh, RFIs, a punch list review, and as built drawings. So it's fairly uh, mm -hmm. inclusive. 
so I would note then they differ from some of the others in that they are including construction administration. Yes. Expenses. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess my question is, were we expecting that we would get these plans done and potentially sell the property and therefore uh, would not need construction management services or is our timeline so tight with the specialty retail tenant that we're going to end up having to get this building under construction and need those services before we can close on a sale? John, I think it's the latter and an architect doesn't do construction management. They will do what they call construction observation or construction administration. And the purpose in that is to see that the job is being done in line with their approved drawings. All right, I misspoke on what it was called, but I, I, I understand and agree that. So Aaron, it, it, it is apparent then that we're gonna have to get the ball rolling with construction prior to potentially settling uh, or, or closing on a, a sale of the property if we in fact decide to sell it, correct? Well, I, I hope that we don't have to, but I mean, Tom, do you want to kind of jump sure. in? Um, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think uh, based on some events that happened today, which uh, we won't discuss right now, um, that um, you do have a, a group of buyers that are interested in buying this fairly quickly. Um, so my estimation would be that you, you're not going to be getting this under construction, but that those buyers would inherit whatever architect you hire. Thank you. When they spoke to me on the phone, I explained to them that we had an agreement to provide construction drawings within 45 days of the lease execution and that our hope was to not have the development authority do the construction services that was discussed. Uh, Aaron, did you compare, and I just realized I didn't look at it carefully, uh, the deliverables in terms of these five um, prospects meeting our delivery necessity in terms of what our, our lease um, entity is requiring? Yes, they were all provided the work letter that the tenant provided to us. That was how, that was what they were given. They were given the work letter, they were given the LD plan, and they were given, they were asked to sign a non-disclosure, and um, they were given the elevation drawings that KD3 had done previously. And they all expect to be able to meet our timeline to produce the document. Yes, the timeline was discussed with them and told them that was the criteria. Okay, great. Um, Do you have anything else about Murray Associates or do we want to move on? Uh, they're, a very, they're a very capable firm. I think they've overdone it. I don't think this, Tom, I'd appreciate your input here, but I don't think this is a real extremely sophisticated structure. I think any of the firms on here could probably do the job. I think uh, I've had experience with all five of those firms, um, with the exception of uh, KD3. I did have a long conversation with KD3, and you know, just cutting to the chase. If this were my project, they've already done the elevations. They've already read the work letter from our specialty grocer. They're within 800 bucks of the low bid. Um, they would be my choice. Um, I think Murray's a, an excellent company, uh, but they're quite big. And this might be just, you know, certain companies are sized for certain projects. And that's true, not just in contracting, but in professional services as well. Uh, my comment would be after reviewing the impressive um, biotype material from Murray and KB, um, that we don't need anyone to design for form and function and historical and all those things that those firms would be exceptional at doing. Uh, this, I, this is a rather simple, rather small rectangular one-story building yeah. of simple construction. So uh, I maybe to shorten the discussion since Murray Associates and Kimmel Bogret were 
considerably higher. And in view of Tom's or Aaron's statement or whoever made the statement that any of these firms could be competent to design the building. It was Ed's comment, I believe. Um, do we want to shorten the discussion and narrow it down to uh, the three that are in the 50,000 range? I would agree with that, John. Okay. Uh, you sure? No, although I, I did see, like, for Murray's, you know, their design portion was $51,000. But are you committing to the full, you know, $90,000, $98, you know? Well, I think that was, it? It wasn't, okay, let me go back here. The um, Murray's uh, 51 was architectural design, but you got to have the structural and MEP design. Yeah, so it is considerably higher. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. But that includes everything from you know soup to nuts. So, so yes, you're right. You're right. The other ones, um, are the, the ones that are the low range of forty nine five to fifty three five, also include MEP, structural and architectural. Yeah. So the two things okay, that it, it, it's not broken out on Murray, you know. The two things that uh, Shoal Garner specifically exclude that the next highest KD3 includes are as built drawings and uh, KD3, I believe, is going to provide four construction administration meeting attendances. And as Tom said, they have done the concept plan. So for KD3, they included construction drawings and building code analysis, but not fire protection design. And yeah, they stated they would prepare drawings for a design build, uh, show specs on the drawings, and assist in obtaining prices from contractors. Um, yeah, I mean, sprinkler systems typically are design build by the sprinkler company. Right. The, the design... Um, theory needs to be worked out in terms of what is the existing um, flow rate available to the site, what would be the uh, system demand for fire protection, and they generically will say we're going to do an NFPA 13 uh, system uh, with a flow rate of X and different parameters, and that will be all they do, and then there's going to be a deferral to shop drawings provided by sprinkler contractor. That's typically how it happens. But there has to be some design done so that we know that, uh, for example, uh, I, I think um, well, one of them excluded uh, design services for fire pump. Uh, well, you don't know you need a fire pump unless you do the flow characteristics. And for a small one-story building, it would be kind of unexpected that you would need a fire pump to boost the flow to the sprinkler system. Um, yeah. And as Ed mentioned, SGS, they included the construction drawings in a building code review, but they excluded bidding services, construction administration, and as-built drawings. Yes. Um, one of my initial reactions was KD3 is, you know, $880 different from SGS, the low bidder and they've done the elevations, they're familiar with the project and so forth. My first inclination was, well, maybe we should just go with them. Um, I have experience working with TKS and SGS from the regulatory standpoint, and I know both of them are competent to work their way through the Uniform Construction Code. Uh, I was actually switching my mind then and thinking SGS because I like their scope uh, state scoping statement for what they covered. Um, maybe I was overlooking some things that aren't covered. Um, oh, there's one exclusion in KD3 that did concern me. Let me find it. 
and maybe Tom or Ed or somebody uh, experienced with site planning can help me there as soon as I find it. Here, 83, okay. Um, okay, They're, they specifically do not include geotechnical services, all right? Uh, a geotech report will need to be provided to KD3 for structural design of the building's foundations. And I was talking to Aaron about that earlier. Um, the other two, I think, specifically state that their price includes structural design and does not exclude geotech. Am I correct? The other two, you meaning, meaning TKS? And, yeah, TKS, TKS was very bare bones, um, but they indicate they will produce structural documents for that price. And they haven't called out unless you would construe. Um, they have a line item of 1.15 times their cost for consultants, special or additional consultants. So you know, I don't know, in fact, if, if they consider a geotech a special consultant, which would be an add-on to their price. Uh, whereas it appears to me under uh, SGS, they're going to produce the drawings and they haven't called out an exception for outside expertise. So is therefore SGS the only one of those three that are in the 50,000 range where we know we don't have to pay extra for geotechnical work? But did they include it specifically, John? Um, okay. EKS says they'll produce structural drawings uh, as part of their base price, and they don't they don't exclude it. Uh, they do say that cons special consultants are at a 1.15 times their cost. Uh, KD3 specifically excludes excludes geotech and SGS indicates they will produce structural drawings, including foundation plan, roof framing, and details and schedules. You can't do that unless you have a geotechnical report and they don't call out, they don't call out any service, under services not part of contract. Um, I didn't see geotechnical in there. So that caused me to reconsider my initial impulse of uh, KD3 and considering seriously um, SGS. Just for the for the record, John, I've uh, in all of my years of doing this, I've never had an architect perform geotech. It's always the owner that performs the geotech and then uh, supplies that to the structural engineer for the footer design. Um, so I'd be very surprised if they SGS had it in their uh, in their scope of work. Well, how can okay? So yeah. the Uniform Construction Code requires soil bearing capability to design the foundation system. Are you thinking that the designers, the structural engineers are using presumptive values? No, all, all I'm saying is that I think SGS, rather than implying that they include geotech, they just forgot to exclude it. Uh, well, I hope you understand my, the word game I was playing there. I'm figuring that if they state for their lump sum price, they're going to produce um, structural drawings of a foundation system and a roof framing plan, and the roof load is carried through the walls to the foundation, mm -hmm. that, you know, they're on the hook to not charge us extra for it. Whereas the other two specifically, well, KDS specifically excludes geotech. Mm -hmm. The structural engineer is going to not use presumptive values. They have to have a geotechnical report, and that's a plus as far as extra charge. Can we I'm ask sorry. them to clarify? Yeah, because I deal with the regulatory side, right? Dollars and cents side. I just know the flow of things in doing uh, mm -hmm. a plan check and construction plan review that typically the geotech has to be done to design the foundation. 
because we know we have a lot of limestone on site. We hope yeah. we don't have caverns on site. We well, also had those uh, caissons that, for some strange reason, underneath the uh, the borders books. So there's obviously some kind of soil condition. Right. So, so Tom, you agree that the architect doesn't do the structural design. The structural no. engineer does. And the structural right. engineer bases the uh, whole design on we have continuous load transfer from the right. roof into the soil that they have to know the soil bearing characteristics. They do that through a geotechnical. Yep, yeah. I agree with all that. I've just never seen an architect or a structural engineer perform the geotech. Correct. It's always on the owner. Um, so I would just ask SGS and rather than assume it, ask them to clarify it, that's all. Okay. I, I, I didn't mean to imply that I, I knew that, I didn't mean to imply that I expected structural engineers or architects to do the evaluation that is a specialty special inspection yep. by a geotech expert i understand that but um that, that's causing me concern as to whether we have um the scoping the same in these three that are in the lower mm. price range that we agreed we would narrow down to mm. yeah it's max uh yeah i don't, I don't think they're we're comparing apples with apples. Um, they're not, they're close, but not, you know, one, one in scope or out of scope, you know, can be thousands of dollars. So, um, yeah, <laughs> um, hard to go just on, on the number that they gave yeah. us. And then conversely, KD3 includes some, uh, I think it was four, or maybe there were several. Uh, project administration visits, which would be when work is under progress, where I know SGS excluded that. And then I heard in our discussion earlier that we don't think we'll need that anyway, uh, but um, construction administrative services are specifically excluded by SGS. And, and I think someone mentioned that um, KD3 specifically included a small number of administrative visits. I think TKS didn't, they didn't mention construction phase services either. Correct. Yeah. And we didn't ask for those, right? No. Oh, oh. okay. Because um, you never know, um, the new uh, tenant might want to use it, or the, whoever, new owner might want to use a different architect. We don't know that. Right. Um, I mean, I hope they don't. That would be, <laughs> but <laughs> that would be up to them. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe I just latched on the SGS proposal because as a person whose career involves reviewing plan sets for code compliance, I liked the way that his outline was written and very comprehensive as to how they would address all of the building systems. And maybe the others do equal or better job and didn't do it as well. Other than the geotech, is there anything else you would like for me to go back and have clarified by either TKS or SGS or KD3? Or do we have any thoughts? Um, I know the township has worked with TKS before. John mentioned that SGS has done some work in the township before, so we're somewhat familiar with them, um, but KD3 has done our, eleva our elevation drawings, so. Does anybody have an idea of what the geo tracking normally would cost if it's not included? Um, yeah, this is Max. Um, it depends, well, 17,000 square feet is not real big, but uh, there's two ways of going about it. One is just like take a backhoe out with a with a um uh geotech guy on site you know just checking his oils and taking some samples there that can that can be you know as little as one or two thousand dollars or they can if they bring out and do some core borings and stuff that that's probably two to three times as much as expensive as that you know five six thousand dollars might 
not be out of the question. Um, Tom, you probably have more experience. Yeah, we just um, <clears throat> we just did test pits on a um, 14 acre parcel up uh, near Belfont where I'm building a supermarket. And um, it was about 2,500 bucks to do all the test pits to figure out the soils and subsoils and bearing capacities. Um, that's the first um, method that Max just described. You go out and cultivate, you're probably going to be somewhere between five and seven thousand bucks. So, and so if it's been excluded by one of the architects, are we on the hook for going out and getting that so that they have that information, or? <laughs> Typically, the property owner uh, hires a geotech specialist, um, geotech engineer, and uh, they create the report, and that's given to the structural engineer. Um, we would need to scope the report. Uh, in other words, if we felt that, you know, backhoe test pits were adequate, and then if, in fact, they, they raised some red flags, we might have to commit to some core drilling on top of that. Uh, but it is a small building footprint, so um, that does limit the amount of uh, soils investigation by either method that would have to be done. And, and just a side comment, um, regardless of who's paying for it, that's the next thing that this group has to hire or have the architect, if it's included in their number, do, because the architect can't go very far without that information. And they'd have to be done pretty quick to get the 45 days, you know. Well, what, let's um, clarify a little bit. The 45 days is we have to give them a lease outline drawing called an LOD in the trade. And that is an architecturally prepared perimeter drawing that gets shipped to the tenant. The tenant then does their elaborate fixture plan and reflected ceiling plan. Uh, off of that, and then it comes back oh, yeah. to our architect from the tenant, and then we produce the full set of drawings. Oh, so we'll have time. Yeah, the 45 days for an LOD is uh, a long time. Yeah, okay. We still might have to get a geotech report though, but yeah, I really don't think that any of these are gonna have included that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let, let, should we assume that none of them include it and we're, we're going to cover it? And, and I think so. And I think that's a fair assumption, Tom. Evaluate it that way and whoever we feel or the group feels more comfortable with, go, you know, go with them. I, I, I don't see anything that's, you know, stands out, but that cries that you know it's going to be a lot more than what they've they've uh, put in their proposals for the design phase. Um, TKS was the highest of the three that are in the low range. I was amused by their um, penny pinching logo. Uh, I was kind of <laughs> under, underwhelmed by their lack of content, but um, you know, Aaron mentioned a different different. Um, requests were made for to different entities so um, this certainly is simplistic and easy to understand um, but if we're pinching pennies we'd go with one of the other two because they're a few thousand dollars less and might you know there might be enough in the difference to pay for some geotech work so to me that would that would narrow me down to kd3 and sgs with a difference of 880 dollars well, oh, just, just to emphasize one more time that KD3 did the elevations, they read the uh, specialty grocers, technical um, specs, um, you're going to save time with them. Um, yeah, they're 800 bucks more, but you're going to save time. They're already familiar with the project, and that's worth a lot. And again, if, if we're making the assumption that we have apples to apples, I'd be willing to <clears throat> Uh, make a motion to go with KD3 um, if, if that 
if we need to make a decision tonight, I'm comfortable with that. I heard Ed Black say uh, he feels that anyone uh, on the list can do the work and we don't need the uh, high design expertise for making something look nice, fit the site, and um, uh, bring you a sense of place and presence to the property because it's a box that's going to have some retail tenants in. Well, the tenants already approved the elevations, haven't they? Yes. yes. So I don't, I don't think we want to stir them up again. No, um, that, it's an exhibit to the lease, Ed. Yeah. All right. Well, and, then I <laughs> and Tom, you're right. Okay. We're, we're doing two sites right now with test pits, and uh, one is a very difficult site. And uh, neither site is going to exceed two thousand dollars for test pits, with the geotech standing there observing. Yeah. Well, then I'm prepared to make a motion to uh, award the design contract for our seventeen thousand whatever square foot retail building at the former Bonton site to KD three in the amount of fifty thousand three hundred eighty dollars. I'll okay, second the motion. We have a motion by John, second by Sal. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And Aaron, if you get questioned by SD, uh, SGS, you have the, uh, the non-inclusion of as-built documents and you have no on-site uh, supervision, no, no on-site observation. Okay. I'm sorry if I belabored that a bit. I just was trying to drill down into uh, comfort level for uh, apples to apples as. Uh, I think it was good conversation, yep. John. Yep. Yep. I think so too. It had to be had. <laughs> so, very good. Larry, do you want to? Want to mention anything about uh, what transpired today? But well, here, hold on. Um, uh, do we have? We're we're not in executive session right now. This is still public session. It's being recorded. Oh, sorry about that. We're gonna do. If we want to talk about proposals for the project, I think we can. Well, Steve, can we we can enter into an executive session? Yes, it was advertised as a special meeting for the purposes of selecting a uh, architect, but also with advertise and other business. Is that, does this fall under that? Correct, as long as you have the other business, you may discuss this and it and real estate is a recognized exception for executive session. So you perhaps wanna complete your um, open session items and then um, recess to executive session for this uh, matter that you, that Larry wants to discuss. Okay. Um. Aaron, you want to give us a staff update? Um, at our previous what? meeting on August 17th, uh, this board or this body authorized us to enter into a lease and Max stopped by today and executed the lease. So tomorrow I will send the lease over to the tenant. So that's exciting and uh, we've come a good way on the condo documents. Our attorney is drafting letters to send to our current tenants to say, uh, this is how the condo has, the condo documents have changed. <clears throat> and uh, please, please sign this letter to acknowledge that you've received them. So that's kind of the process. And after they've acknowledged that they've received them, then we can actually sign the condo declaration. And then uh, last week, the land development plan we made it through all of our comments and the plan was recorded last Thursday at the courthouse so that was also exciting very good uh, any update with PennDOT PennDOT is working on its confirmatory deed to us did I talk about this at our last meeting they um we found that the entrance way which current which used to have part of the route 15 ramp over it as part of its uh, as an easement actually has been dedicated back to the township because part of it was a township road and the other part of it was uh, dedicated back to, or vacated to 
uh, all stores, which now would be us, we would now be the owner. So it's one entity. So we asked PennDOT to, um, rather than just having footnotes on a plan that say that those easements were removed and they, be they belong to us, actually do a confirmatory deed. So it'll clean it up so that when the new owner has it, it'll show that it's all together and they have that property. So um, that's where we are at with PennDOT. And I think Art had reached out to um, Derek and was talking to him about the appraisal for the area around the, the bonefish. But we may so Aaron, want to talk about, I don't know, we may want to talk about the appraisal in uh, executive session. And Aaron, I'm on, I can tell you about my call with PennDOT when you go to executive session. Okay. Aaron, when, when you addressed uh, Max signing the lease, for the record, it was the lease with the specialty grocer, is that correct? Yes. Good. <clears throat> I think that's all I have for staff uh, updates, unless anyone else wanted to bring anything up. Okay, here, hearing none, uh, our next meeting date is Monday, September 21st, 2020 at 6 p.m. Um, I guess we'll just go out of, we'll close this meeting and go into <laughs> executive session at 6.38. Uh, John, you want to do uh, anything? I, I will make a motion to adjourn this special meeting to executive session. Al? I'll second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Five zero. Okay. Well, uh, Let me um stop the recording. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm.